Hi, my name is Octavia Ray, and I am the owner of Righteous Kingdom Customs, Righteous Estates, and the Jubilant Den. And I want to welcome you to What's Your Hustle podcast. What's your hustle? What do you do? Here to bring money and attention to you. A lot of people want to know you got to give them the truth. Here to run the numbers up, we about to go through the roof. What's your hustle? What's your hustle? Here to talk about your grind. How you spend your time. We done brought you to the show. You got to speak what's on your mind. What's your hustle? What's your Welcome back to another episode of What's Your Hustle Podcast. And today we got a special guest with us. Today we have my sister Octavia Ray. Now I've been watching her for a long time, for like the last two years. I've been watching her and she started off with just creating customized clothes and hats and shirts and things of that nature. And I was like, oh, that's what's up. The next thing you know, she started getting into real estate. She got an event space. And I was like, what in the what? It's like every time I see it, she just bossed up level by level by level. And I just enjoy watching your growth. And um, it's a pleasure and honor to have you here on the podcast, my sister. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I thank you and bless you for allowing me to come and be your guest on today. It's very, um, it's honorable, mm -hmm. and I don't take it lightly. Mm -hmm. Don't take it lightly. Uh, well, we, you know, we only invite who we consider the best of the best of the uh -huh. best. The ones we feel like is really shaking and moving. Yes. So yes. you here for a reason and a purpose. Yes. Awesome. I received that. I received Amen. that. Amen. So uh so tell us what's been going on lately. Oh, uh, so what's been going on? Um so just the start of everything, um, we are really branching out with um, our customizing business. Mm -hmm. We're partnering with um, local businesses in the city. Um, we're opening up a actual um, store where the kids can come purchase stuff at Raleigh High School for mm -hmm. Righteous Kingdom Customs. So that's like big ups. Um, to the business club at Riley High School. Um, we have an event center in Elkhart. So that is huge. I'm, I'm extremely excited about where it's going. Um, and just being able to pull on other people, um, not just to come and book for events, but also to help empower other entrepreneurs by doing different trainings and um, pull on God's people and, and, and help build his kingdom. So, and of course there's the real estate. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. What made you, um, and congratulations, that's, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to breathe. She like, yeah, you ain't lying. But what made you branch out to, uh, to Elkhart, you know, being primarily that everything is like, like you started out in South Bend? Um, so I was looking for an event center here in South Bend and, um, it's a ton of event centers here. It's mm -hmm. a ton of them. Mm -hmm. um, tons of options to choose from. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of it had to do with um, seeing this minority woman looking for a space. Um, in the price range that I was looking for, um, I got a lot of no's. Mm. I got a lot of no's. Um, so I prayed about it and the Lord ended up leading me um, to Elkhart. Mm. And literally, um, I went through hoops and hurdles for that, but I got my yes. Mm. Um, you know, what God ordains is what he ordains. Right. Um, and when he blessed us with that space, um, he said, I enlarged your territory. Now go get my people. Mm -hmm. So that's a call. You know, that's a decree. Um, I'm charged to that. So I'm just excited. I'm excited um, to be in Elkhart. It's not um, a huge selection of event halls there, but also to be a minority event set event. Um, event center is huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So um, I just want to create a a space of happiness and where people can go and celebrate, celebrate life and celebrate their victories. Mm -hmm. What um, what made you do like research? Because, you know, normally like when people get ideas, they're like, okay, I'm just gonna put it 
right here. Mm -hmm. But you was like, no, nah, let me research and find mm -hmm. out does is this needed or can I make money? Like, how did you come to that? Um, so I'm gonna be honest with you. Everything that I do, um, God gives me a vision for it, mm -hmm. and I just immediately um I go into prayer. Um, you can also go to the IUSB and they'll pull um, a report, like a demographic report, um, show you, you know, what is in that area, how many businesses it is, um, what that community is like, how many event centers there are. Mm -hmm. um, and I just heard a lot of the complaints for Elkhart was that there was no event halls. Um, if they were, they were really big, formal ones. And... Um, like another hall being you could only rent it out for three hours, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I felt like that was a problem that I was able mm -hmm. to solve and innovate from. Wow. I mean, I like how you said I felt that was a problem that I can solve. Yeah. Because that's all that we do as entrepreneurs. Yes. You find a problem and you solve it. Yes, and absolutely. I so often like to say if those two get married, you have just created the money. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, like I said, I just, it was a problem and it needed to be solved. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I really wanted to give people a space where they could come and learn and get the tools that they need. Um, my, I have a heart for uh, felons. Mm -hmm. I have a heart for felons. I was once um, a, a felon, a convicted felon. And I know the... Um, problems and issues that you face when you're transitioning back into society. Mm -hmm. um, it's lack of jobs or being turned down from jobs because of your criminal history. So I felt like if I could provide a space for other people to come, be trained and get the resources that they need, um, they don't have to worry about no's anymore. They can create their own yeses. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's an additional problem. Yeah, <laughs> that you it's recognize. Luck. All, all the Lord, <laughs> all <Wow>. the Lord. <laughs> that's so. That's so. So it's so it's real key to um to having a relationship with God and like in order to be successful within business. Like, would you agree to that? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, everybody talk about um. The highlights of being an entrepreneur and you know we we only show our wins mm -hmm. a lot of times we only show our wins but it's a lot of um, problems that come with that it's a lot of um, failures that come with that it's a lot of um, being tactical you know problem solving strategizing and um, it's been times where literally I probably hadn't had a penny because I paid out everything mm -hmm. you know what I mean um, so yeah, that's it's it's important, you know, to have that relationship with God. There has been times where, um, Lord, you got to make a way because if you don't, you know, I, I'm gonna have to drop it. I'm gonna have to walk away. And every time, the Lord has always shown up and shown out for me. I mean, in the the least times when I'm least expecting it, or I'm expecting resources to come from different areas um, that's already in the making and they're not coming, guess who steps in? Mm, Don't depend on yourself. I need you to depend on me. What is it that you need? Come talk to me, my daughter. Tell me what it is that you need. Wow, he does say we can do nothing without, without him. Come on, nothing, nothing. Every vision. Um, that I have, everything that I have been able to manifest, it has all come through me speaking it, the Lord giving me a vision and me tackling it. You know, um, everything, the real estate. Um, I graduated from a real estate school at IUSB in 2016, mm -hmm. you wow. know, 2016. And um, when I realized that if I became a real estate agent, they were going to take a pretty nice chunk of the money, I decided that was something I didn't want to do. And literally in 2016, I spoke. I wanted to own um, a miniature apartment complex. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't have an apartment complex, but I have a space. I have a property that I own that is two storefronts and four apartments. Mm. Like, you know, that's huge. Yes. That's huge. But I spoke it. I believed it. I acted on it. Um... Yeah. 
Everything, everything. And you and you basically spoke that into existence like 2016. I spoke it into existence 2016 when I graduated from real estate um, school. I, I spoke it with my well, then he was my fiance, now my husband. Um, I spoke to him and I told him, you know, hey, I don't think this is what I want to do. You know, so I was very educated um, in the real estate industry, but I didn't I didn't want to give away everything that I worked for. Mm. It's a lot of fees involved. I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I'm like, I pay you. Hold on. I'm going to do all this work and I got to pay you. No, I need some of that to come back to me. Look. So, yeah. I'll be, be feeling the same way when it comes down <laughs> to paying taxes. I'm like... <laughs> You ain't help me make not that dollar. You ain't part. giving me that contact. That but you like, give me, like, <laughs> run that. Come on. Now. Just come in here and take your money that right. you didn't work hard for. You know, of course, taxes, we can't get out of that. Mm-hmm. But I can get out of this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's another way around. Um, and I'm just, I'm quite sure. I'm 100% positive that this will not be my last property where um i own apartments or storefronts like um my goal is to own an apartment complex with at least 10 to 20 apartments in it mm-hmm. so that's that's something that's huge for me that's in the working it's in the making um and i know that god gonna provide i ain't gotta worry about it all i gotta do is speak it and pray on it right right that's that <laughs> that's it that's it the bible says if you are skilled in the matter you will yes succeed. yes yes so you 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 definitely put in the work, put it, got that <laughs> grind. I like that about you. You spoke it into existence. Everything. And, and that's one thing that I uh, you know that I like about God is like He'll tell you something. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times we get discouraged and we think like it's gonna happen right now. Come in the on. Next two days, Come like on. forty seventy two hours most. <laughs> Not at all. You no. Know, Not it, at all. Sometimes it takes. Years, years, yes, years. years. But I feel like, cause God already know the outcome. Mm-hmm. It's like we just gotta go through that that process of learning. Come on. But you know, man, mm. it's a process. Everything is a process. Um, it's just like planting something. You know, you plant mm-hmm. seeds. You're not expecting that flower to rise up overnight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It takes time. It take you got to nurture that plant. Right. You got to water it. You got to talk to it. You got to mm-hmm. speak life into it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As it grows, you have to nurture it. You have to take care of it. You have to water it some more. You have to spray it with oil. You got to put it in the sunlight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same. It's the same exact way with any vision that the Lord gives mm-hmm. to us. Um, and you got to have determination. You got to have determination. I mean, it's a lot of days I want to throw in a towel and I don't. I just be like, okay, I'm done for today, you know? Mm. Um, But that next day, I'm back up. I'm back up in prayer and I'm like, Lord, order and direct my steps. Mm. I need your guidance. I need your wisdom. That's huge. Lord, give me the wisdom. Mm. Give me the wisdom. I need your wisdom. All right, Solomon. Hey, you can't, you can he, what his words say, you can never ask for enough wisdom. Mm. He give that to you freely. Mm. All you got to do is ask. Right. So if I want it, I need the wisdom to maintain it. I need the wisdom to establish it, to build it. Mm. So it's, so it must be a lot of folks around here not asking God then. <laughs> or not listening. Mm. Or not listening. Sometimes we got to get in the right place. Our ear got to be tuned to his, his mouth, his mouthpiece. We got to be obedient. Obedient is better than sacrifice. Sometimes all it takes is that wrong move. And if we get too far over, we out of his will. So now we got to go back and do our first works over to even get to the vision that he gave us. Mm. So let's talk about, let's go back to the beginning yes. when you first created your first business. <laughs> <laughs> I like saying that your first business. Yes, yeah. yes. What like what was what was that process like? Okay, like you pray, you ask God, and He was like, "This is what I want you to do." Then let's talk about some of the steps that you took to to see that thing come into fruition. So the first business, Righteous Kingdom Customs, mm-hmm. and um, if you haven't check out my shirt, Contagious Faith. I am pushing this like crazy right now because mm-hmm. it is my faith. It's my faith, um, and I trust God. But my first business, Righteous Kingdom Customs, um, that all started out to, believe it or not, I was 14 years old and I wanted to be a fashion designer. Mm. Um, And of course, 
you know, when you're young, you don't know any better. Life situations happen. Um, I became an early mom, you know what I mean? A teenage mom. Um, I had to take care of my kids. But as I hit uh, my 30s, the the desire came back up for it. Um, and I knew at that moment that I wanted to start a faith-based t-shirt line, um, which is the Bloody Faith Edition. So we have... Um, a line that's Bloody Faith Edition, and it's empowered solely on um, inspiration, faith, Bible scriptures, um, just empowering, you know what I mean? Empowering God's people. So this started out as a clothing line, and then it progressed into you creating for, for other people? So it started out as me just, just doing, releasing my creativity. It started out as me releasing my creativity. Um, and from there people just began to order and they wanted to know, can you make this? Oh, can you make this? Can you do shoes? Can you do jackets? Can you, yeah, I can do everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm The Lord blessed me with that gift of creativity. So it started out as a faith-based clothing line um, when I originally started, but I always wanted to be a clothing designer. Okay. Um, and from there, um, the huge turning point let me tell y'all how good God is, right? right. <laughs> so no. the huge turning point for me was um, in 2019, I had an order um, and I had put so much time, so much work, design, an outfit mm -hmm. um, into this order. And if the, at the end of the day, um, the client wasn't pleased with it. And it mm. devastated me. Like, I had went over my budget to make this outfit. Um, I put in all these hours. And, you know, um, she was like, no. And I'm like, God. It devastated me, right? It mm. crushed me. That feeling of rejection. All this time I put in this order. Right. And I, I literally set Righteous Kingdom Customs down. Mm. I set it down. Um, and I was... I will only make stuff for people that I know is going to like my stuff. Um, that was my, my stipulation. Well, COVID came. We went into a pandemic. Mm -hmm. I know how to sew. People needed masks. And um, from there, I, I literally, me and my entire household, we sat and made masks for months. Wow. And everything, um, the doors, the doors, the windows, Heaven opened up um, and I was able to take that money and then begin to reinvest it. Um, big ups to Spark, the Women's Entrepreneurship Group. Man, they taught me so much. Um, so from there, I was able to take all the education, all the training that I got from that program and implement it into starting my first actual business that you're able to come to. Um, I ended up getting my storefront of May 2020. Um, from May of 2020 to September, I ended up purchasing um, the property that my storefront is actually in. Um, so, yeah, like the Lord just, it was about moving and being obedient. It was just moving and being obedient. Um, my mom kept telling me, Octavia, make masks, make masks. I'm like, Mom, I don't want to make masks. But that was the best thing I could have did. You know what I mean? I went to like making almost $8,000 a month just in making masks. Wow. That was huge for me. That wasn't including, you know, the other stuff, the T-shirts, the uh, bathroom sets, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The um, business business packages that I offer. Wow. So that was just in masks. Wow, that's some. Um, that's a lot of masks. That's a lot of masks. <laughs> like how, like how many masks would you say you was like sewing, like guesstimate? <laughs> like a day a or day, all? Like a day. So in one day, I think the most masks that um, mm, maybe about. 70, 70 wow. in one day. 70 masks. Yeah. And that was the time from like waking up to like going to sleep, you know. So how was you able to, how was you able to like balance like family life and everything else? <laughs> <laughs> that, look, that's the answer right there. <laughs> Man. Um, so literally my family was there. We was working together. Mm -hmm. We was working together. Um, me and my daughter, we was sewing them. I had my other daughter. She's cutting out these patterns for me. My son was delivering. My husband was delivering. Like my, 
like, you know what? I don't even want to say this, and I know I'm going to get... I know he's going to get me, but, like, I taught my husband how to sew, you know? <laughs> hey, you got But we got to get it. Right, right. And um, so, literally, like, we all work together as a family. Like, that was huge, hmm. you know? Um, of course, we still maintained our home. We still spent time together. Um, I would cook dinner, you know? And But we was... We was on them sewing machines. Mm. She, <laughs> and she still found time to cook dinner. Yes, yes, yes. Mompreneur yes. right there. Mompreneur, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. That is a blessing to get the whole family involved mm-hmm. in that. A lot of... Sometimes, you know, families, they don't they don't step in. They like, well, that's your thing. You decided that's what God gave you. You can get me that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So that was a blessing. Um it was it was truly a blessing. Um I was I was able to innovate, you know, I was mm-hmm. able to fix the problem. Like the hospitals didn't have masks, you know, it was a mask shortage. You couldn't buy them anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um we made a lot of donations, a lot of contributions to a lot of mm-hmm. the businesses, the local businesses. Um, so not only in me building, I was able to give back. And it's, you know, and there's no greater feeling than that. You yes. Know, um, and anything that we have is God's anyway. And that the, part. The only reason why He allows us to have success and experience these blessings is so that we can go out to bless other people and be yes. the light of the world when that time for the opera when the opportunity comes. Yes. Like, hey. I got you. Yes, yes. So it was it was um, truly amazing. Like I said, I was able to build that business, um, give back, and you know, um, from there purchase purchase my property. You know, um, seeing that vision in there, sewing up some stuff. So in the so so the pandemic happened. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no. Let's go. Let's take it a, a little bit back. Yes. You you created. You went all out for this lady. With, with with this custom <laughs> outfit and she like no yes. and you like you know what you fell back yes I was willing to give it up I would have gave it up um, it, 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 but it, look what God had I'm sorry yeah so much yeah so, <laughs> so much so much to connected to Righteous Kingdom Customs that's what I say a lot of times is, is I've been saying lately it's like okay when when God gives you an idea it, it just it's just not one thing yeah it ends up becoming multiple things yes. you're a prime example like yes. you went from starting this to like things was going pretty good you're like I'm done done to COVID happens and now you making eight thousand dollars a month yes. plus yes. off of mass and then yes. you turned around and you didn't say well God's been good to me. Let me go turn up. Let me go to the mall and ball out. None of that. You said no. <laughs> you said I'm going to reinvest this money yes. into the business. Yes. And then turned around and got into real estate. That part. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, I don't want no Gucci purse. <laughs> Love it. I don't want no Gucci purse. <laughs> Forget that purse. Be like, husband, let's buy some real estate. <laughs> oh, you, you know what that statement reminds me of is um, uh, Common and um, Tiffany Haddish. Mm-hmm. They 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 dating or whatever you want to call it. And I read an article. She told him, "I don't want a wedding ring or engagement ring. I want some property." Come on, yes. We <laughs> generational. Come on now. Let's pass it down. Let's pass it down. The goal and the plan is that every child has a business and a property. Mm. And I have a grandchild. So now I got to run a little harder. Mm. You know, I, I want to leave him a property or a business as well. Mm. That's the goal. Bible says a good man or woman <laughs> <laughs> leaves, an, <laughs> leaves an inheritance for his children. Yes. His children. Yes. And you and you thinking in the right vein. I, I think a lot of times we just we get caught up in the moment like I just want this. Yeah. But you looking you you not you not even you looking past past Come past on. to make sure your legacy yes. and your family yes. is insured. Yeah. If that's part of the reason why some of us are not where we would like to be at today because unfortunately our parents didn't get the right upbringing training whatever you want to call it make the sacrifices Mm -hmm. but i commend you for for making a sacrifice i mean a lot of times especially us as brown (laughs) minorities we like hey (laughs) 
I got my GED. I got high school. I'm good. good. No, nah, you said you you said you know I want to go into business, and there's some things that I don't know. And you went and you joined the Spark Program, Women's yes. Entrepreneurs yes. Program. Yes, yes. And you got the training that you need. Yes. People need to go out and get more training. Absolutely. And um, what I'll add on to that, it is so much training available. It's so much training available. Like, literally, I have knowledge in the real estate because I graduated from the real estate um, real estate program at IUSB. I graduated from the SPARK program at St. Mary's College in 2018. I graduated from the SPARK Mastermind program in 2019. In 2020, I graduated from um, Hustle SBE program. Mm. In 2020, I graduated from the Incremental Development program. I'm a neighborhood farmer. Like, I'm, mm. I'm equipped to build a neighborhood. You know, like... Um, 2020, what, one, I did the um, Notre Dame Entrepreneurship Boot Camp. So my thing is, I have to learn. If I'm not learning, I feel like I am not doing um, what I, the, the maximum of what I could be doing. Mm-hmm. Knowledge is power. The word of God says, our people perish for the lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. If I didn't have the knowledge, there's no way I would have been able to obtain and do all of these things. You know what I mean? Um, Yes, God gave me the vision. Yes, he released it for me. Um, Yes, I pray. You know what I mean? But without the knowledge, it's some stuff I probably wouldn't have been able to avoid. You know what I mean? Um, Different ways of going about running these businesses, building these businesses, um, reinvesting in them. You know what I mean? Problem solving, strategizing. Like that comes from a lot of the education, a lot of the training, a lot of the certifications. So, um, yeah. Got to get that. Got to get that knowledge. I got to catch up with you. I only went through like one little program. I don't <laughs> no, you look. You right on time. You mm. right on time. You doing what you're supposed to do. Mm. And whatever is for you, is for you. Mm. It's for you. Amen. That's right. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I I I used to I used to hate learning. Like I didn't mm-hmm. like I didn't like I went the best in school. Like mm-hmm. I, I hated school with like a passion and. But now, I love it. Like, I get in these courses and stuff and, and you know, these challenges where you got to yes. show up for the whole week. And I'll be like, man, I can't wait to get in here and get this education. <laughs> you yes. know? Because um, they say the more you learn, the more you earn. Yes. You know, yes. Like your network equals your network. Yes. You know? Yes. Like, but... Girl, you got it. No, I'm trying to get in these stocks. I need to learn more about these stocks. So I'm coming to uh, Corey Pringle uh, 101 stock training. (laughs) Look, I spoke it. Move. No. We get we got you. Yes, uh, yes. That's what the that's what the wealth talk is about. Like I'm yes. just, I'm just starting them on lives, and you know people probably just think I'm going live, but mm-hmm. I, it's, I'm it's bigger than yes. that. Like we about to take this into an entrepreneur thing where we gonna meet up on Zoom yes. and we gonna talk about how to get this money. That part. I'm going to be there. Look, and we're going to bring in <laughs> other professionals such as yourself to talk about the things to train us. Yes. And we're going to get, we gonna, it's going to be a word from God. You're going to get some Come training. On. You're going to get some top, some stock tips. You're going to, you're going to, every meeting, you're going to walk out with a bag. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I know people sometimes, they probably might get tired of me like, this dude always talk about money, but it's like, hmm. it's, God, God, everybody got their own message, right? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Some, Absolutely. Somebody needs to hit it. Somebody thinks that I just, I'm just i supposed to be in poverty. I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be broken. You know, mm-hmm. this is just how it is, and it won't never change, and I'm going to accept that. And no, no, like, your life can progressively get better. Like, once you give your life over to the Lord. That part first. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Once you start developing your relationship with him, yes. then he'll start giving you things. Yes. Right? Then doors will start opening up. Absolutely. Then you become empowered. Then you become motivated. Now you want to start on. changing the world. Yes. You, you want to change the world. Mm. And that's what he called us to do. He told us to go get his people. Mm. You know what I mean? We can all reach somebody. So 
somebody got to hear our testimony. Right. You know what I mean? Whether it was from the, the worst instances in life, the bad ones, the good ones, you know, what he brought us out of, what he delivered us from, what he set us free from, like... Those testimonies is going to draw people, you know, because they see you in your now state. But do you know what I had to come out of to get to this now state? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I had to walk through? Do you know the things I had to fight? Mm -hmm. We probably got a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. But if I don't tell you my testimony, how can you come up out of what's holding you in bondage? It might just be a poverty mind state, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Who knows? But that's what we're supposed to do. And um, I'm all for it. I'm just whatever the Lord tells me to do, I'm doing it. Mm. That's just how much I trust him. I believe him. I trust him with my life wholeheartedly. I trust him with my home. I trust him with my children, with my finances, with my marriage. I trust him in every aspect of my life. I trust him with my health. Mm. You know, Um, I just I trust him. I trust his word. So it sounds like the secret, the key to your success is just trusting God no matter what it looks like. Trusting God. I ain't going to say I ain't had no weary moments, mm-hmm. but I trust them. Oh, we, we, I trust them. Life going to happen to us. It didn't, it, didn't, it, it, it didn't say it wasn't going to happen. Come on. You know what I'm saying? It's just about how you go through it, but yes. knowing that you're not going through it alone, that you got Christ with yes. you. Yes. That's a yes. difference. Really yes. Come on. Love you. Um, my my testimony. My mama died at sixteen. My daddy Ooh. died at seventeen. Jesus. And probably about a year or so after that, I was homeless. No auntie, no uncle, no cousins, no sister, no brothers God. took me in. Um, I remember staying in a homeless shelter. I remember one night I stayed in the police station on Saturday night in Halsted in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I remember eating out of garbage can. Jesus. I remember uh, um, like hustling up to like like pay addicts to like stay with them and then once they get they blaze you gotta go yeah um and i just remember feeling hopeless and mm. depressed like like it's over for me like my mom and my father's gone like <laughs> that's Jesus. it you yeah. know yeah and somehow god somehow god orchestrated all of these things and and so it's like i i you know i told i told i remember one time i remember i was praying i said god I said, if you make me successful, I said that every chance I'll get, I'll mention your name. Come on. When I didn't have nothing, mm. I said, if you, if I, I said, if you make me successful, I said I will be sure to let everybody know that it wasn't me. It was you. It was you. Yes, yes, man, that is a powerful testimony, like powerful, mm. because all those storms you know what i mean all those trials that you endured you could have let it just sit on you keep you in bondage and not move forward you know what i mean Mm -hmm. a lot of times we self-sabotage and do the the pity party on ourselves woe is me Mm -hmm. but the fact that you was able to find him even in the midst you know what i mean even in the midst because he was always with you sometimes we just so far away that we don't see them mm. because we looking at the chaos. We looking at the problems. We looking at the storm, you know, but he brought you out of that. Mm. And look where your heart was at. God, I want to tell everybody about you. If you make me successful, I will tell everybody about you. What, you your heart, you know what I mean? Your heart. Mm. He looked at that. The fact that you was willing, a willing vessel. Some people know and don't want to tell. Mm. But the fact that you was willing, he going to honor that. Mm. He going to bless you for that. Mm. And the impact, you know what I mean? The impact, what you're doing now, you know, we got to get together <laughs> because I need you on entrepreneur. I need you to um, speak for Entrepreneur Table Talk. Oh. I need you to come. I come all you. about the stocks. I got you. Need you. Whatever, you know, whatever you need, empower I got you. each other. Mm-hmm. Yes, I got you. I will share. I will share everything I know. Um, yes, a lot of times, a lot of times, especially us as minorities, we come across information that that not only will change our life, but if we share it, it can change other people's lives. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, we tend to hold it to ourselves mm-hmm. and be selfish. And by doing this podcast and interviewing people and, and hanging out with 
you know, upper level people is that's that's not how it works. Yeah. You know no. what I'm saying? Share. Mm -hmm. um, be a connector. You know, give. You know, you can never you can never give out if you're a giver. Come on. You know, but if you hold, you are always that's all you got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm about sharing and 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 and, and giving because I want to see our, our people make it, and I I just feel like we are we we was already in slavery for all of those years, Come on. and <laughs> you know Come and I ain't on. trying to go like no, <laughs> like no history lessons no, but I'm just I mean saying, it's real though we we went through that and like literally like we are behind when it comes to like financial literacy like a lot yes. of the stuff that we that we are just not coming up learning about yes. other people have been doing this stuff for years centuries you see what i'm saying centuries decades yes. like we go so we gotta we gotta catch up because we we it's like we we just now wrapping our heads around paper Come money. On. now yes. they got cryptocurrency yes. and bitcoin and all of this other stuff like we gotta curry up and figure out the paper money part and it's okay though, cause we just—it's no lack. As long as you give, you will lack nothing. No lack. I'm screaming, no lack all year. No lack. Yeah. No, lack. no lack. No lack. Look what they say: all <laughs> gas, no break. That part, <laughs> all gas, no breaks. Look. Can't waste a day, a second, a minute. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing is wasteable in this season. We ain't wasting nothing. We utilizing every, everything. Everything. Like we like in order to be successful, like you gotta be intentional with setting yes. goals and like I'm getting out there, I'm making it happen. You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't know how many calls you need to make today in order to like you missing it. That part, that we, part. We gotta grind. That part. And um so I was watching your uh your live video the other day mm -hmm. and you was stating how um you were saying how your father would say you was getting up too late if you woke up at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And that's so true. Mm -hmm. That is so true. You have to purposely, you have to be purposeful in every uh, thing that you're doing in this season. Everything has to be purpose, you know, um, like not by coincidence, not by accident. Like you have to be intentional in your planning, um, in your schedules, in your routine. Mm. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna do this? You know what I mean? So um, that blessed me. It blessed me. Um, I'm an early riser anyway, but I have days where I'll be waking up late and I'll be devastated. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm devastated because I feel like I'm already behind on my day. You know, I've missed so many hours of getting some stuff done that really needed to be done. So, I mean, I think with, with all the businesses and everything that you have created, I think you can have a sleep in a little late. You know, <laughs> I think that I think that's what it's about. It's like, you know, I feel like that's what financial freedom is, yeah. is, I, you know. I can choose what time I decide to get out of the bed. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and many times, I'm pretty sure, even though you stayed in the bed, I'm pretty sure money was still rolling in while you was <laughs> in the bed. Like, like that's that's the beauty of why I, I, I love stocks and so yes. forth. It's because, like, I could, I could get up at 10 o'clock and be like, oh, snap, I done made $1,000. I done made yes. $10,000. Yes. You know, just yes. like that, you know. Yes. So I think we got to... Like you say, we got to be intentional this year, and, yes. and I think we definitely got to be um, intentional about where we put in our money at. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of times it's not it's not that we don't have money or make money. It's just that we just give the money to the wrong places, wrong people, that and so part, forth. That part. You know, invest in yourself. So like that you come on, you took the words right out of my mouth, um, and that's literally what I was gonna say. You know, invest in yourself. Because if you got the education, you can take that and you can do anything with it. If you got the vision, you can take that and you can build the vision. You know what I mean? If you got the drive, if you got the tenacity and you have a game plan, you have an idea, invest it in yourself and go hard. Like literally, um, I had to share with one of my sisters, you know, sis, you didn't work like 80 or 90 hours this week. Mm -hmm. I need you to invest that in you. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine 
putting that 80 or 90 hours a week in yourself, in your business, in your home, in your um, education, whatever it is you are equipping yourself with. If you put that in yourself, imagine, imagine, you know, so um, I'm big on making an investment in me making an investment in my family, making an investment in my business because um, it's not going to be just beneficial to me. I'm able to, like I said, leave something for my children, leave them with that business, that real estate, um, even down to helping others, you know? Um, Because of that, I'm able to speak to others. I'm able to share my testimony, empower them, give them the knowledge. Like I offer business coaching. Um, I offer training. Um, If you're creative, I, I offer that. You can book with me and learn how to up your gift and begin to make a generate a greater profit or just start to generate a profit i offer that those those are things that i offer um the real estate i offer that you know so um if it's not through a workshop that is pretty much like crumbs in the trash you know what i mean or crumbs that you drop on the floor and i don't even say pennies I can't say pennies, you know, I say crumbs because we blow that on meals and literally have crumbs on us when we're done, you know. Um, But those are things that, you know, you can invest in, invest in that workshop, invest in that training, Um, invest in investing yourself, bet on you. I think I don't know who said that somebody else. I've heard somebody else say that. Um, I think that was on here. But, you know, invest in yourself. Yeah. Bet, yeah. Bet on you. Nobody's yeah. gonna bet on you more than yourself. That part. That mm-hmm. part. Yes. I, I learned that early off. Like, man, like I remember when I first started, like my dream before all of this, I wanted to be um an artist. And um I remember <laughs> <laughs> But you is an artist. Yeah, I am. You an artist. I am I, you get paid off your creativity. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well at that time I was really like, I wanna be like this rapper, I wanna hit the stage and all of that and and um I remember I was in college at the time and um uh, man I would get I would get whatever refund check I would get, I would just pour it in there and then any tax refund I was pouring like I mean any extra dollar I mean I just I yeah. always just Poured it in, mm-hmm. poured it in. I mean, and this goes back, I mean, past 2016, you know, wow. and it's, it's the same with you. It's like mm-hmm. it didn't, you didn't really see the success until yes. like all of those years. You have success, but it's like now it's like oh, I really see it. Yes. And the funny part is it's like this, it's still just the tip <laughs> of the bike iceberg. This That's ain't the it. best ain't even came the yet. The best ain't even came yet. We ain't even witnessed it. Um, we ain't even walked it. into it. Yes, eyes have not seen, mm. ears have not heard. Mm. Um, man, God, he is just, he's just overwhelmingly, he's just so overwhelmingly good to us. Um, and I just, I try to live by his word. I try to live, um, I try to truly honor my covenant with him. Um, I don't, I don't want to be out of order. You know, I don't want to be out of order because then I might take on something I can't handle. You know, um, I want to do everything that is pleasing unto him. Um, I want to delight myself in him Um, because I know he's going to order my steps. I know he's going to direct my paths. I know he's going to give me the next go. You know, um, right now I'm not in any type of um, trainings business wise. But right now I'm in um, a leader leaders in training group. Mm. So right now I'm learning. Um, I'm investing my time in my walk with God right mm. now. Mm. I'm investing that. I'm investing it um, versus me going to the next educational training. Mm. You know, um, I want to be everything that God called me to be. Mm. You know, mm. I want to walk in my full authority and power. Um, so I know that once I have completed that, like, what's what's the work? You know, what work now, God? Mm-hmm. So I know that greater is coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's going to be the next big thing going to be property. The next big thing going to be, I don't know what it's going to be. 
But I know that God gonna lead me and direct my steps. Oh, uh, you know, that's you know, once you get your first piece of property, it's like you hooked. It's yeah. like let me get some yeah. more, let me get another one, yeah. and another. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's like it's, DJ Khaled. It's, another it's one. talking there. <laughs> it's talking there. So we, me and my husband, we're trying to um, make decisions on what we what we want to dibble in next. You know, um, where we want to go now. Um, but big things coming, big things coming. That's like the mastermind, like on the behind me that a lot of people don't see, you know, um, because he's, he's working. So. Wow. So your husband is like, Hey, let's get to this. Absolutely. He's a big part. Absolutely. He big encourager, um, big pusher. Um, like he's. He's been my partner in everything, um, everything. I have a vision and he like the mastermind, like, let's do this, you know, let's work around this, let's build it this way, you know, um, always pouring in different ideas, different ways to be strategic, different ways to pull on people um, and bring them into what uh, whatever it is that we're doing. So I thank God for him. I definitely thank God for him. Big, 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 big pusher. Mm. I wouldn't be shocked if the next thing y'all got into was like trucking. <laughs> Look now, I let me your... find out, Prophet. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely, um, we're definitely transitioning back into trucking. Um, we just a, a desire, um, just a, a desire. We've did that avenue already, and now we're looking into different areas in the truck and that mm -hmm. um, we feel would be best. So we want to live a life retired, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, not retired, mm -hmm. um, not going and having to rip and run so much. So um, that's our big thing. We're transitioning to see how we can begin to enjoy life like we're retired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh now, if you, I made some videos where I talked about Flipper, uh, Flipper.com, where you can buy like software companies, websites, mm -hmm. <laughs> blogs. I mean, all sorts of stuff is on there. Yes. You know, um, I have, I've seen a couple of things that piqued my interest, but I ain't, I haven't seen nothing like that's, that's the one. Mm -hmm. But I like to tell people um, about that because that's something that you can, you can buy and it's all, it's a business yeah. that's already set up. It's already generate income. It already had the traffic. All you do is pay for it. They transfer ownership to you. Really? You can tweak it if you want to tweak it. Mm -hmm. But it has the employees. It has the payroll system. It has the, the like everything. Okay. It tells you like um, um, how much is the expenses and all mm -hmm. that's going to be. And it tells you like what show, you know, your net profit. And I mean, you, you'd be shocked. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, even I mean, you can even go on. I mean, I've had really much luck on eBay, but I mean, not eBay, but even Craigslist. Uh -huh. They have a little section where you know buy. They have businesses. Yes. Yes. You know, I think it's real good for like vending machines. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you said you you said something <laughs> earlier. Than, oh, I know. I was thinking. I was thinking about J Javonna Wright. She said that um, for her son, uh, grandson's birthday, I believe she bought him a, um, a vending machine. Yeah. You know, she had me thinking like, okay, let me what? I'm like, could I put a vending oh, machine in this office? Definitely, <laughs> definitely getting a vending machine that we've already mastermind behind that. My mm -hmm. husband, mm -hmm. um, vending machines is awesome. Mm -hmm. You would be surprised how much is accumulated in that little machine. That's yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I thought about it's like, man, I should you know get a couple of maybe one for like each yes. one of my kids. And yes. Like, like this is yours you manage yes that's an awesome idea mm -hmm. awesome yeah, I awesome i think it's important that we get our kids just like you did mm -hmm. involved in being an entrepreneur early and, and just seeing things you yes know? um i mean my wife was talking <laughs> last night uh, about our uh, youngest daughter and um how she created this, a vision board on, on on her business and and that's when she put it on paper that's when i knew that she was for real yes you know, she just Write the vision, make it plain. Yes, right. And you don't get no plainer than it, what she no. did. Wow. You don't get no plainer than that. And so we, I'm like, I'm talking about, I was like, I was thinking, well, since she did that, the first look, like she got a little waffle thing. I was like, maybe we should do something with the waffles, rent out a little spot. You know, about yes. mine. Yes, you yes. Know? But man, you know, I, I'm just grateful that, that uh, you know, that my kids is like listening and like paying attention because mm -hmm. sometimes you don't really think they are until they come home with a vision board like this yes. is my business this is what I want to do and I'm like well let's get this money then yes. 
taste. She yeah. got good taste. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter got my daughter got good taste. I say, baby, you got a real expensive taste. I say, mm-hmm. so now you either gonna need a real high paying job yes. or you're gonna have to be an entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> like, like she about she about that life. Is like, she like they <laughs> they they favorite song is Rich Girl Problems. Really, Rich Girl Problems. <laughs> Can I get a Starbucks with a cinnamon <laughs> on the side? <laughs> And that's, but that's so true. Um, what you what you're stating, like even with our children, and pulling our children in. Um, you know, my daughter, she does makeup. Mm. So, and that's her. That's right now. That's what she's big on. She's big on doing makeup. Um, and booking people. So she has her own makeup room. Um, mm. in our house where she books people. She has her own space, so she doesn't have to pay boo for it. Mm. You know, she doesn't have to pay um some of those fees that come with being in a. Uh, um, an established business or one outside um, and even that like she's now she's in a place where she's like well I want to pay for the <clears throat> the extensions so she wants to do lash extensions now um, and even going into nails so she her thing is you know I, I want to be an entrepreneur and I, I love the fact that she's seen our drive so she's like dibbling in it she's trying to find her mess she's trying to fit find where she fits at Mm -hmm. um so i just think that that's that's huge you know our kids pay attention to us more than we think that they do Mm -hmm. you know so it's kind of like what are you surrounding them with you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um because she see us get up and and grind hard daily Mm -hmm. you know I would rather my child see see me get up and yes. go out there and make it happen being an entrepreneur than any than anything yes. else. Yes. You know, and, and with your your daughter, that's awesome and that's gonna turn into to multiple things. Like I'm seeing her got her own makeup line, Come lip on. gloss yes, line, I receive eyelashes. Yes. I see her coaching yes. other young women yes. to, to uh to how to do the, the same thing. Yes. Like like when God gives you something, it just does not just it's just not one stream of yes. income. It's it's just not. It's many drivers. And that's you know, um, that's another big thing, you know. I know even now, like I'm in different areas, but I have drivers in each area. Mm-hmm. So I have maybe five drivers with the um, customizing business, you know, with the real estate. I might have two or three drivers with that, um, with the event center. I'm now adding more drivers to it. So it's not just, okay, I have this space, I'm getting paid because it's getting rented. You know, now I have this space and how can I turn this into a driver? So you got to really be um, aware of, I just feel like you need to be aware of what is going on now in today's society, in today's culture, Um, because whatever it is that you are selling, you also have to make sure that it's a it's a need for it. It's a demand for it, Mm. Um, you know, and then from there, you just begin to problem solve. You know, how can I help people and solve a problem at the same time? And that's how I look at it. How can I help people and solve a problem at the same time? That's it. And tell them about God. And tell them about <laughs> God, right? That's that's so key what you said because a lot of times we just we don't think about the other uh, person. We only mm-hmm. thinking about like I'm starting this because I want to make a million dollars this year, or yes. I want to get out of poverty. But mm-hmm. we're not saying you know how can the other person be blessed yes, you know yes. like in other words I guess what I'm saying is we focus on solving our problem more than we focus on trying to serve solve our clients problem yes. and then that's how we have mistakes yes. that's why we don't become as successful as we are because we more focused on us Absolutely. than we are about them and and that is so true um, and you know as you were saying that I look at the the real estate so the real estate is righteous estates Mm-hmm. And um, when I got it, I'm like, oh, you know, I just want this apartment. I want to be able to make money. You know, I want to be able to do this. Um, that was the start of it. But as I learned more and studied the area and study, um, you know, who was in need of affordable living, you know, in a nice area, a decent area, um, you know, it's like my vision changed. And everybody that I housed to, 
Um, one are minority men. Mm. Minority men. So I I solved a problem. Um, minority men lack. Um, they lack housing. Um, you know, they're not so easily rented to, um, maybe because of their background or because of, um, stereotypes. Um, so I provide living for pretty, like I said, all my tenants are men. Mm -hmm. Um, the storefront, I offer a space for entrepreneurs, you know, um, and a lot of times it's hard to, to get in that, like I told you about the experience of it being hard for me to even find a space, you mm-hmm. know, in South Bend, um, because I, I know, you know, it was the stereotype. Um, this is a lot of money, you know. Can you afford? Well, absolutely, I can. That's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was able to solve a problem, and um, it wasn't just a problem that. You know, I wanted to solve, but it was also to help other people and empower them. You know, um, I think two out of four of my tenants, like, this is their first time ever living on their own by themselves. Mm. You know, um, so they getting, they getting stability, you know. Man, that's a blessing that you were able to provide that um, for them. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for you. Like, you just... It's just dope that you just out here just solving problems. <laughs> but the problems solving. The problems solving. You just, you just out here just looking for problems. Your husband maybe said, girl, I need you to stop finding problems. Oh, he's so like, oh, you need to stop finding problems. <laughs> and my husband probably like, what now? I'll tell you, mm-hmm. what now? Yeah. That's probably what my wife was saying last night. I was like, baby, I was on the phone, but guess what? Somebody told me a problem. And I'm like, look, if we I'm like, look, if we solve this, yes. I say, do you know how much money we will make if we solve this problem for them? Yes. And I said, forget about the money part. I said, we will be making the lives of that person yes. better and making the lives of the other individuals yes. better. And so it's like when you, if you, if, if y'all could just let this click, let it marinate yes. in your mind, if you could just solve a problem. That's it. Your life will change. Life will change. Stop, look, stop trying to find people to solve your problem. Go Come out on. And solve you go problem. out and solve somebody else's problem. I love it. And I love God it. Gonna solve and yours. then God going to solve yours. Come on. Come on. Now, that's a good <laughs> joke. That's a good joke. You go solve somebody else's problem and allow God to solve yours. Mm. Come on. Look. I feel like on that note, we should probably just end the podcast yes, on that. Yes, absolutely. I don't, I don't think we're going to say nothing. <laughs> or like, we ain't talking about a whole lot. Yes. And I mean, this podcast has really blessed me. Thank you. I, it's I, been a blessing to me. Learned a lot about you and yes. about your, your family and about um, your ministry and, yes. and where your, your heart is. And um, I'm glad we made this connection. Yes. And I mean, I I got some when we hit the when the record button stop. I got some I got some ideas that could help Absolutely. excel you. Thank so, you, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you. I thank you for allowing me to come on, um, and just share. You know, just be able to open up and uh, allow people to know that they too can solve a problem, mm. and allow God to solve their problems. <laughs>